Mehdi over here is course planning there, and it's computer science on the other side. And if you've forgotten where you're going, it's okay. Pick a session, it's all on the door. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Do you want them to be up there?
kinds of things that students could be introduced to. Uh, it's not considered a sort of a be all end all of the skills, and you probably wouldn't teach for all of them. Uh, if you go mental. Now you look at um, just some ideas for integrating those skills with other assessment strands. We need to remember that media is an assessment strand. It's not a course strand itself. So media, computer science, programming, um, electronics, infrastructure, all those things do actually and are intended to integrate and be taught together in a full course. Again, if you try and teach too much of that stuff individually, you'll go mad. Um, it's a little bit like someone teaching languages and expecting to know, you know 900 different languages. Literally. It's impossible. Um, and there's a bit of an issue here in schools, but um, we'll have a look at those kind of ideas. And I've got a, a, an approach that I used in my classroom when I was teaching at Hegel, uh, where students were interesting, to say the least, and would switch off very quickly um, with structured, fully structured courses. Um, so I had a different approach that I'll, I'll run through as well. And then you can fire ideas around and help me on my board and what I'm doing as you go away. Mm -hmm. great. I have been um, back in industry for two years now, um, so I am getting a little divorced. I never assessed under the technology curriculum, we had that digital team, it was just kicking off. Um, but I was involved in writing at the level two and being involved in level three standards. So I vaguely understand what the point is. So this is me, I'm Josh, most of you probably know me, it's a few you have never seen before. Um, I was a designer, ran my own company for a while, um, six years. Became a classroom teacher on WIMP, don't know why. So good, went through grad school, <coughs> taught at Higley, and um, took over from Burnside when they were just finishing up their College of Computing. And we started something similar at Higley. It was uh, structurally quite different. Um, but it was a 12 hour a week course for level three students, and they were fully immersed in everything they did. That went for a little while, did three years, and started building up other courses, IT courses. And then I resigned to go back into industry. One of the key things about my classroom was that it was using completely open source software. So we ran Linux on the desktop. Um, and there was a lot of freedom around those tools. Students could download, use whatever they needed at the time, which links into the way I ran my courses. My courses merged quite quickly. I use open source software for my work. Um, we don't really touch Windows and it's a system from the Internet Explorer. And my key interests are in interaction and interface design, the visual communication side of the world. Um, and when you use those terms, the media world does open up quite considerably, and I think teaching becomes a bit more interesting. So I'm not a fan of the old computer studies uh, output spreadsheet, or approach to life. So what I, I remember doing a wee talk a wee while ago about um, media skills. And I used this table as a, a basic framework, just knocking down the kind of things that you can teach and are usually known about by people who work in the design field of some sort. And when I talk about design, I'm talking about a big process rather than graphic design, notation design specifically. My feeling is a good designer should be media on specific. So basically what I've got, uh, all of this is on a drive somewhere, so I'll make that available for you. But basically I sort of see that there's roughly five kind of top level subject areas for teaching. Uh, there's image manipulation, basically messing around with robots and images and stuff, as distinct from graphic design. Um, Web design and web technologies, a few very interesting things in there. Print design, uh, what I'm lumping together is motion graphics, uh, which is basically just a bit of knowledge about time and communication across time, and 3D modeling, uh, which again is a fairly flippant title for a reasonably big area. Um, I used all of these in my course, um, usually integrated with something like programming. Uh, web design encompassed a lot of stuff when I was doing it. Um, so students would be doing 3D modeling, for example, 
and presented on a website, which could also be then printed in some way. So this is what I would sort of see at level one. It's kind of assuming um, you don't have much of a year 10 key, and you're kind of starting from scratch at level one, um, mainly because that's the way I was working in the end, what it's designed for. That said, we got new students all the way up to level three, which was annoying. But these are the sort of the skills they'll be learning when they start off. So learning the difference between raster and vector, color theory, hue, saturation, all those kind of things. Stuff you do in Photoshop or GIMP. Uh, web design, simply the difference between the web and the internet, uh, those kinds of skills. Content, markup, how to actually do it, presenting the content, and then spring research. Uh, all of my students learned how to mark up content by hand first, and then they would apply some form of presentation to it. And the reason for that was simply that the presentation isn't always visual. Um, one of my year 11 classes had a boy who had been blind since birth, um, so getting him to do visual style sheets was kind of relevant for him. He wasn't overly excited about the web in the first place, but. Uh, we got them doing audio stuff instead, playing out all the limitations of that. Uh, in print, uh, learning the difference between desktop publishing and word processing, and not mixing the two up. A number of students are trying to type straight into something like Amazon. It is uh, quite phenomenal. A number of adults do it too, so. um, Print resolution, composition, how to actually lay out uh, a page, but also how to structure a document. This is just really initial stuff, you know, what is a page actually made up of, how does it work? Motion graphics, we never really got very far on this, but um, timelines, frame rates, transitions, it's that, again, communicating an idea across time, um, and video, falls into that kind of thing, audio uh, production. Uh, 3D modeling, I use this in a number of classes, graphics, and that mainly for rapid prototyping, and it'll make sense when um, I, I look at the course structure I was setting up for the year that I resigned, um, where students would be making something, and they were expected to make a physical object, in theory, and they would rapid prototype that, so they would come up with um, 3D models of it. And it could be as simple as a box, you know, a serial box or something, um, fish tank here in graphics. Um, but getting them used to the idea of freedom, the, the six degrees of freedom, the control you have in a, um, a virtual environment behind glass, anyway, uh, being able to move around. Most of the boys understood that fairly inherently, because they do it all the time on PlayStation. And despite the fact they shouldn't have, most of them played Grand Theft Auto and had understood walking and moving and those kinds of things. Uh, materials, how to texture an object and what that means. Um, I used to start that at year 10 just because it was easy um, and they could do things like put pictures on a staple that would be correct for them. So that's kind of where I see level one. And at the moment this is just looking at the media skills. And you might pick you know, a couple of those streams or merge them together in some interesting sort of way. Um, I would never do a particular unit on 3D modeling, it would always be with motion graphics or print or web or something like that. That just means you have to get a little clever. Or make the students clever. Force them into it. Just part two of it. It doesn't matter. It's worth trying. The job is to make the environment, not the tubing action. Okay, so level two. This is just a step up. Okay, so understanding. Same basic things, same basic idea. Um, these are just just ideas. So you know things like we might get some of the students who are particularly interested in illustrating how to take an illustrated sketch and pull it into a vector program so they can set up a graphic novel or something like that. Photo manipulation at a much higher level, so they're actually cropping things out of a photo, cloning backgrounds, doing that kind of thing. Um, we've looked at icon design, and that's a classic one that can work directly with um, another screen, so computer science would be a classic one. 
uh, we redesigned icons for the Ubuntu desktop and uh, posted them online for feedback. It didn't go so well. Uh, print graphic design, so I understand it the front and screen based resolutions. Uh, I think web design gets more interesting uh, at level two. Staying a little more and more interface design, introducing concepts of usability, uh, interaction, those kinds of ideas. Uh, initial scripting, which works directly into the programming stuff as well. But creating interfaces that respond. I'll show you an example of one of those um, a little bit later on. Really very simple stuff. And I say that as a teacher, not as a guy who works in the web industry. Um, I have absolutely no real skill with programming. In fact, I try and stay away from it. I programmers would make me stay away from it. But initial small front-end scripting and the ability to communicate something in a prototype is quite important. Um, print design, just basically going the next step, looking at more interesting structured documents. We might introduce um, things like table of contents and how they're automated, those kinds of ideas. Then I've got another example of print from markup, which just makes the print design world a little more interesting for the slightly more interesting student. Uh, and motion graphics, so things like audio, multiple timelines. So it's just constantly building them up all the time. Um, a student coming in at level two with no computing skill and no understanding of the technology process would struggle because behind all of this you have all of your courses um, designed around coming up with a solution. 3D animations, reflections, refractions, ray tracing, all good stuff. Uh, I level two is mostly doing reflections, very, very simple ones. They would build something out of glass, making the counts of it. all three of these tables that this entire presentation is on page. Level three, this is where the good stuff happens in my mind. And usually if the students have come through with you for three years, <laughs> does anyone actually have students go through level one, two and three? Oh yeah. Oh, it's just awful. Yeah, like, have you used computers before? No. <laughs> cool. I'm going home. Supposed <laughs> <laughs> to. So, I had one boy come in from. Where was he? Oh, I'm stretching back two and a half years now. Totally flippant. The Middle Eastern country where there's a lot of war going on. And he'd never seen a computer before. And he was in my level three IT class. I'm like, okay. <laughs> cool, here's the year 10 program. It's uh, theory I find. It's not so much the students because they're naive and innocent, but it's the, the timetable and the management who expect these students to pass level three. <laughs> Or even operate in the classroom. I just, it's that um, something about, oh, they don't really need to be able to understand English, so they'll be okay in computing, graphics, or hard materials. A student who can't read in hard materials is a scary creature. Um, uh, but that's one of the, when I talk about the technology curriculum, it's one of the main frustrations I have with schools is that they still tend to see it as a, a subject like this. You split up at the low level, the subdomains, the digital technology, the hard materials. That go. My greatest aim was and still is to get IT students working with hard materials students to do robot wars. Something we can sell tickets to. You know, you have guys who know how to weld and do stuff with metal and make sharp things to pull pointy and pummel with people who can program logic into a chip and work actuators and then they join together. We set up the chicken wire fences and things. Anyway, I, I, the whole thing in my head was great. Anyway, that's good. Kind of I find it really hard in life nationals because it's like truly good to live Right. Because you have a. I mean, I'm sort of an entry, but. 
this hardware is not reference parts like that. So it's all in the like that. A lot of work, um, which I think is a little unfair. Yeah, it's probably about two But it doesn't make it easy to earn. So have those who do the one do that little stitch to the two that some go on. Because you just tell them the course, you don't tell them the levels in which they go. There's the other problem yeah. as well. Um, yeah, little things signed up with year, age levels. Yeah. Obviously, they're pretty tough. Um, especially at level one, where a kid might be just about to break through and start to go away doing English exam. Very strange. <coughs> oh, actually, the next part is going to be really interesting. There. Okay, level three. That's just a lot more. Not a lot more work, a lot more thinking um, at a higher level. Um, I was always really interested in pushing them with user interface design, things like infographics, partly because by this point I expect them to be able to modify a photo in some way. It's actually not a particularly tough technique, it's just practice. But thinking about a user interface and how you represent an idea in that interface and communicate it visually is actually incredibly hard work. Um, I know because I've spent days agonizing over whether it should be a little star or a little picnic table or something. And I'm deciding both of them crap through the way. So infographics, that's sort of communication. <coughs> <coughs> stuff. Web design. We started looking at mobile devices because they're more interesting than big screen things uh, and it was emerging at the time. Content management, you might introduce them to someone like Drupal or WordPress or something, but actually working with those items. Print design. Uh, doc book, XML, how to create print from markup. Um, again, using something like InDesign or Scribus. Isn't rocket science. Um, in fact, a lot of people just do it very badly. But being able to link things up, that document structure, I believe, is level two. At level three, <coughs> I want them to actually understand what's going on. How do they create content that can be presented as print? And I think that's more important. And how does that then link in with the industry requirements of? Um, the resolutions, the ink choices, the stock paper choices, those kinds of things. Don't expect them to go too deep into that because it's mental uh, and I don't even like it. But this basic getting stuff ready for print without having a tool to necessarily do it for you, I think is quite an interesting skill. Some students have paid it to go nuts on it. Got an example of that for you. Come on. Motion graphics, you might look at, um, I don't know much about video or audio. Motion or time. So when I was doing things like rotoscoping, it might have been interesting. But it's, it's basically looking at higher level, more specific skills. If you're lucky enough to have something, you know, one of the Adobe things would be really cool. The ones that do like the tattoos that move on your arm and that kind of stuff. You might play with that. But again, anything that requires uh, what can be done with a filter, I believe isn't actually rocket science. It's not learning, it's just a learning how to use a tool that may or may not go away. If you can somehow wrap that in a bigger picture or make it part of the technology, it makes sense. Uh, 3D modeling, just high level stuff. Again, high level 3 did a lot of this kind of work. Yeah. One boy who was also doing hard materials who 3D modeled with his bed and pulled out all the resources he'd need for it before he did it. Um, we started with mixed <coughs> reality, mainly because the virtual Wii mobile devices are all going in there. And the overlays, you link it up with um, interface design. How do you overlay an interface on a real world? Means we got to look at a lot of boys in my class, so we looked at a lot of things like heads up displays on fighter jets, opening scenes from Top Gun. Good fun. It's probably breaking the law, actually. Who might? Um, fluid dynamics. Really quite good in Blender. Um, that basically means making stuff act like wind or water or liquid. Um, and I can do it, which is quite special. Uh, not that you still require a lot of scripting. Now you kind of play around and push things drop and loop. 
that falls into the data because we have kind of video stuff. So that's basically level three, uh, and you're probably starting to look at it and go, hmm, that's quite high level. Um, and I believe that's where level three should be. If you're operating at level three, at secondary level, um, I always used to think of the next step for them. Uh, the next step is, if they're very lucky in industry, if they're slightly less lucky, the university, etc. Um, but they'll be operating at a much different <coughs> that said, a lot of the, um, the tertiary institutes are having to lower their entry level, which is frustrating. So we, um, without naming names, one of the big players we have a lot of problems with. So you've got a lot of students come through going, have you got design? Have you got Dreamweaver? We go, no, we don't use Dreamweaver at all. In fact, we work on the server most of the time. Uh, can you use a terminal on Linux? Uh, and that's really frustrating. We, we want people who have skills, but we need them to be flexible and not driven by tools, which is um, less and less in the current Basically, it was word processing, databases, spreadsheets. Yeah. It was just, I looked at it and went, no, I'm not even going to touch that. I'm going to work here if that's the way you're doing it. So, one of the things I did, and it annoyed the hell out of the IT guy, I dual booted my machines. They gave me Windows, but they gave me no tools that would run on Windows. Um, so, the first year we did actually um, use, we just downloaded Windows versions of things like GIMP, Blender, that. Um, and I sort of asked, permission to install them on it by getting the admin password, um, which was given freely, so I should that was about. Um, but I installed those tools on it. Um, so the first year I did anything that was fairly structured. Um, and from there, we actually lucked out a little bit and the, the next year Windows didn't work very well. I wanted to dual boot with Ubuntu and Windows to operating systems, and the first one would be Windows. The students would buy default version to Windows, and that was no compromise. Uh, unfortunately, Windows didn't want to do it. It just fell over completely every time we tried to install it. So um, two days before the class started, I went around all my machines and stuck a bunch of Linux on them, which took me about two hours, because I could set it up for the master CD and just go nuts. And this was me learning about the bunch of Linux at the same time. We got rid of Windows completely, and the first thing that happened when the students came in was that they couldn't use their computers. It was fantastic for an IT teacher. And they're looking at it going, I don't know what this is, I don't like it, how do I get to my H drive, or whatever it was. So there is no H drive. Welcome to the real world. You have a home drive and you've got the network drives. Oh, that man. And then they'd settle down after about a month. It's happening. It's a little bit. And you just work with them, basically. So what I did was the first, uh, I'll talk about this in a minute with this theme-based course idea, the first month... Planning. Planning two. Planning two. We're doing planning two, by the way. We're too big. Thank you. 
had to redesign the whole thing, just conceptual sketches. No one could draw, they always complained about that. Um, but it was a real pressure cooker environment in terms of the timing. It was just like, go, you should have had five ideas by now, and they'll be scrubbing everything. Just constantly reinforcing the idea that I can write it down, do anything, draw anything, do what they like. And this is sort of day one, so that, you know, the handling got a little box and uh, and then they had to get up in front of the class as a group and present their idea and why it was the best idea. So they're all standing there with the knees knocking and panicking and thing. Uh, and by the end of it, most of them were very happy, which was interesting. So they're happy to sit down for a start, uh, but they were kind of happy to muscle through it and it set the expectation that you were not necessarily an individual in this class, you were part of a bigger class. That was really important. So right from day one, they were scared crackles. Which is, and then my 
course. And then we did this thing, and they had all of Turn 1 to do it. Which was a little of faith in my book. I did teach alongside this, but they had to basically come up with, uh, not the assessment for the IT skills, but basically they would outline the course for the year that they thought they were going to do, based on a list of skills that you've already seen, kind of things they're interested in, so we do a little bit of what you're interested in, and then they would knock down something. Now they had to come up with an overlying theme, and this theme could change during the year, so they weren't locked into something they would hate for the rest of the year. But in this case, for example, uh, toy design. I'm going to create a toy. This was an example. So some people did, I'm going to do, I'm going to do something about tattoos. So she's going to come up with um, branding for a tattoo parlor, a website for that tattoo parlor, a brochure for the tattoo parlor. And I think she did it just to try it on with me. She said, I want to do something about tattoos. I said, like, do you have any? So she did that kind of thing. Um, and we did a scooter. We made the 3D model scooter and the red box for it. And again, the packaging, the website, that kind of stuff. Slightly. So they do this. And if we got halfway through term one and no one had submitted anything or a student had, um, was sort of fiddling around, uh, I had a bunch of pre-packaged ones that we dumped on them, uh, which very rarely happened actually. So they had to do some planning, which is their initial planning and the outlines. I gave them student-friendly versions of the assessment requirements. So they just spelled out the kinds of things I expected to see that would link up with the achievement standards. So um, if, for example, they were doing the plastic toy character design, um, they would see something very similar to this and then a bunch of bullet points. So they'd need to see some form of proposal. Um, with certain things in it, which is all just wonderful technology stuff. Uh, I need to see some research, that kind of thing. Uh, concepts, development of ideas, that kind of work. Um, so this is the kind of thing they'll be doing. Uh, this was one I was quite interested in, because it went from a 2D idea to a 3D idea, so actually being able to realise it. They all link up with um, achievement standards, and these ones are just generic tech. Um, but now you've got so many more to play with, it's, it's just not funny. Um, that was only for my purposes. Basically, looking at the three, their ideas about where they could show me evidence for stuff. Uh, my students all bid for their credits. They had to actually come to me and say, I think I've done this. So I didn't mark work. I'm um, very designer, I'm so lazy about everything. Um, paperwork. But no one would talk to me until they'd done something about here anyway. And then you'd start to get students going, I think I've done a really good brief. Can you read it? And I would go, Are you sure? And I'd say yes. And there in the lesson I would just read it. And I had a big old checklist matrix of all the students, all the standards, and all the bits. And I'd go through and go, seen evidence for that, write down what the evidence was, which is much easier to do than a bigger one that you get. And the student would go, cool, and they would immediately move on to concept work because they knew that's what they had to do next. So they had this list of things. They never had to do another brief for assessment again, but they had to do another brief on every project. Um, usually what happened was that students were crap and then they would just sort of get better. And towards the end of the year, you'd start to see more and more of them doing the brief thing. There were always four or five in my class who just didn't get the whole bit of anything. Um, but it decentralized all that marking, uh, which, quite frankly, after my first year of trying it, I got back to marking graphics and new techniques and mm -hmm. just didn't work. I didn't have enough time in my life for that kind of stuff. How did you get on, like, famous for about okay. that word. 
Um, I was a wee bit fuzzy because I, when I looked at the technology curriculum for the first time, I said, ah, design process and action, brilliant. And for me, the design process was, I was in business, I boiled it down to five stages because I could use those five stages as a project management tool, which means each stage could be signed off by a customer. It was a distinct piece of work. And just by pure chance, when you take that into a classroom, um, it's really easy for the students to understand because it's not, you know, waffly, you know, it's not really sort of back and forth. And a good designer can use that process, you know, to jump back. So if a, if a customer goes mental halfway through the build, you can drop them right back to analysis of concepts and work them through. And using that, they, we keep the terminology really simple. I read a lot of those standards and I just had to decipher them for students. So I had to learn what they taught me as well. And then I'd decipher that for students into words that make sense. So a constraint usually is money, time, you know, um, resource. Um, you know, Sarah is a good example because recently we've just redesigned their website. It's not my fault. Um, if you look at Sarah back in the not the woman who sells the car. But they needed it in three weeks. We had two other big projects on, and our company has one web designer. That's me. <laughs> and I was already a bit stressed, and I'm prone to, um, let's just call them designer tantrums, uh, when things get a bit tight. Um, so they ended up paying a lot of money for it, and I ended up, by throwing a tantrum, getting a bit of a break at the end uh, to do this. It's a dubious break, but it's a break nonetheless. Um, so you can break those kind of things down really quickly and easily for students, I think. <coughs> Show me that part of work. Uh, did some 
some icons, which is to say we're followed the process perfectly. In fact, there's a very good web design here. It's still a bit of a crack, but nice one. So yeah, that's um, basically how they work. Yeah. And that, I just, honestly, I just don't see, I mean, I've used unit standards in my, yeah. what was half a tech class and half a computing class. And it was mostly at the time to make up credits mm -hmm. uh, for a 12 hour course at that high level. Level one, when I first did that, I just dumped them all straight to tech standards because we, we had the credit numbers. We, I ended up with something like 40 options. You know, we had downsized what I was going to assess again. Find my boss. This work is good work. And they just, they freed us up. So, you know, one of the other aspects of this is a student might get halfway through a plastic toy design and they've done a really good brief. They start to knock out good concepts and they're going, this is boring. At which point you can simply say, swap things, choose something else, and come back to it. And if they've got things like package design, doesn't matter what they've clicked on, or they've got desktop publishing in some form. Doesn't matter what they switch to, that project probably won't change much. It'll be the content on that project that changes. And that's very empowering. Did you stay with one strand of Schools operate with timetables, and 
aware of them. Absolutely. But, and just this, this assessment, you know, um, the technology curriculum is trying to get people to talk and work together and more than one teacher in a classroom and all this kind of stuff. And the schools are saying, no, have you got an exam? <laughs> uh, this was one of the draw cards. Uh, the level two and level year 10, level one and two courses were set up to be a big player in my subject area. Um, and setting those up without exams. The first year course we all agreed, the senior managers were all over it, like a, something sticky. Um, but what happened was that the students thought that was the best.